Welcome back. How are you? Dr. Andrew Peterson from the Holtorf Medical Group. Everything all right with you today? Going great. We're talking libido. That's right. This is a bit crazy. It's a bit racy. Yeah? That's right. So a recent study in the Journal of American Medical Association showed that 31% of men and 43% of women suffer from some form of sexual inadequacy at some point in their lives. Lack of desire, inability to achieve orgasm during intercourse or pain during intercourse are all common symptoms of sexual dysfunction in both men and women. That's right. Um, Tell us about that. One of the things that I think is the most obvious, if you think about it, is in the medical world, men's sexual dysfunction is all over. You know, it's on TV, it's in the commercials, it's in the magazine, we have a medicine for it. But for women, where do they go for their sexual dysfunction? If you look at those statistics, women have a 30% it's more higher. likelihood yeah. of having a problem. They go to Cosmo and Glamour, right? Okay. Um, it's a failure of the medical system because what causes their sexual dysfunction is the same sort of chemical cascade, physiologically, that causes sexual dysfunction for men. And I think it is important to set the stage for this topic that um, healthy sex is not just a cascade of physiologic events. It is also emotions, trust, vulnerability, mm -hmm. um, an ability to communicate with your partner and talk about your needs and your fears, etc. And so counseling may be something that's important to help you through that. That's not the biology part, but with regard to biology, there's a whole bunch that we can do that we probably aren't. Okay, so are you referring to the fact that, well, first of all, let's talk about what are the symptoms for a woman, and then we'll go about the symptoms for a man, because maybe there's people going, I don't know if I have this or not. You know, for women, a low libido. They're just simply not as interested in sex as they either once were or as interested in sex as they think they should be is a symptom of sexual dysfunction because a relationship, se sex is part of a relationship that, that brings that closeness to the relationship and it allows for a trust to develop, right? And if you don't have interest in sex and your husband does, it's going to make things difficult. It's going to put stress on your relationship mm -hmm. in that regard all the time. Mm -hmm. So just a low libido. Then there are things like vaginal dryness, pain during intercourse, um, and inability to, inability to orgasm. And that's a huge one because the health benefits of having sex has mostly to do with having an orgasm. Wow. What about for men? Hmm. Um, for men, erectile dysfunction is probably the thing that is most obvious to them. They do have a decrease in their libido, but as we age, our hormone levels go down. Our thyroid hormone levels, our testosterone, our as for women, progesterone and estrogen. And as those levels decline, both genders have a decreased interest in sex. So for a man, maybe he has less interest in sex at 35 than at 18, um, but he still has an interest. Okay. Well, once you get to erectile dysfunction, then you're sort of like, what's going on? And that does indicate other health issues in your body. If, you, if the arteries that cause an erection are not functioning well, well, the arteries in your heart and the arteries in your brain have that same health. Oh, wow. So it's kind of a sign that maybe Absolutely. something's going on. It's an on. early indicator of heart disease. It's an early indicator of diabetes. Um, you should have that treated because the treatment for that will also Benefit. improve yeah. mm -hmm. heart and, and lung. So and let's talk about brain. what are the treatments that will help boost your libido? Well, first and foremost is testosterone, and that is not just a male hormone. Testosterone will improve libido in women and in men. What happens is there's this complex chemical cascade in the brain, then nitric oxide is released. That molecule causes smooth muscle to relax, which allows blood to flow into arteries. Well, that's health for everything, whether you're talking about your liver, your heart, or your ability to, to have an erection. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can't get clitoral engorgement because those arteries aren't relaxed, then it's harder to have an orgasm for a woman or for a man. So this is a matter they need to go in and have a test done to see what their levels are? Yeah, a, a knowledgeable doctor should be able to test the levels of your testosterone in a man or a woman, and the levels are different, um, but to be able to say, wow, yeah, your levels are not optimal. And going back to youthful levels is what treats this, not going back to normal levels, because what's normal when you're 70 is not what's youthful and will right. allow these things to function well. Okay, and what makes your program concerning this so different? I would say the biggest thing is spending a lot of time with patients. My, my visits are 30 minutes at the shortest and an hour long when we begin. Um, you can't get to the root of a problem in five minutes or seven minutes. You just can't. Um, there's one hormone real quick, if we're almost done, that I want to talk about called oxytocin. Oxytocin is released in the brain when you have an orgasm. It's released most at orgasm. It's also re released in stimulation, and that's a crucially important um, hormone 
for, for sexual satisfaction, for closeness, for bonding. It makes a difference in relationships. It treats depression, anxiety. It treats social anxieties. And so that's something that if you can't have an orgasm or if you have decreased libido, we can compound that medication and that will make huge differences. Yeah, so that's what would actually bond and bring you closer together mm -hmm. is if you both right. partners are having that. Interesting. If you, if you want some more information on this, don't forget, we'll have it all on our website, abc4.com. Just click on good thing, or excuse me, click on the Daily Dish, and, <coughs> sorry, ah, I need some water over here, and we'll have all that information out there for you. This is a subject that really you should take the time, make an appointment, go in and see Dr. Peterson, and he'll spend some time to talk to you about it, or if you have any questions, Again, you can go to the site right there, and it'll be all answered for you. Thank you so much for being here and for talking about this today. Thank you. Great Thank you. I think we're coming up in the kitchen. We're in the kitchen. It's exciting. Raspberry pie? Raspberry pie? or No, it's cherry pie. Cherry pie. Oh, my gosh. I like both anyway. Right from be the back in a minute. Dead. You bet.